You may soon have a healthy but unusual snack option. Two young American entrepreneurs are trying to turn an invasive plague into a tasty environmental solution, but because of a U.S. trade dispute, their hopes may depend on Canadian appetites. Kim Brunhuber has a story from Berkeley, California. Mind if I try a little there? No, please. Please do. This jerky is, to the uninitiated, an acquired taste. Think a piece of leather that's been left to soak in a bait bucket. Are you guys happy with the flavor? Uh, yeah, well, we're, we're going to refine the recipe, I think, a little bit more. The recipe for their El Diablito jerky, say 30-year-old Mike Mitchell and 29-year-old Sam Bordia, is a work in progress. But the fishy taste is intentional. These chewy brown strips began life in a Mexican river as one of these, Hypostomus plecostomus, or sucker mouth catfish. But Mexican fishermen have given the lizard-like fish another name. It's a pez diablo, the devil fish. Um, I had no idea what it was at the time. If you own an aquarium, you may know it as a type of pleco, which you can buy to keep your aquarium clean, because it eats algae. And it's very, very good at it. It arrived in Mexico probably about 15 years ago and it's taken over the waterways. And today it accounts for about 70 up to potentially 80% of the wild fish capture in a lot of these regions. It's highly aggressive and it reproduces like crazy. So it's really like an evolutionary miracle. This miracle isn't much to look at, all spines and scales, and it turns a cadaverous gray when you cook it. Few outside of its native Brazil are willing to eat it. In fact, many even wrongly believe it's poisonous, so it's usually considered a trash fish. A lot of the properties that make it a hard fish to cook, as you would, say, a normal white fleshed uh, fish, um, actually lend itself very well to making jerky. So the two master students started a company called Akari Fish and built a small processing plant in Mexico. Soon, local fishermen, instead of throwing out the hard-shelled, bottom-feeding pez diablo they caught by accident, would catch them on purpose and sell them to Akari. We've seen a huge boost in incomes. Uh, on average, they're earning 25% more than they were previously. Now they're hoping to scale up the fish jerky operation by using an American production facility. How do you go about marketing a creature we don't really <laughs> eat? Yeah, it's a good question. This is a great opportunity where like by eating our fish, it's not only that you're not harming the environment, you're helping the environment. So we see a really positive story that we can tell. Next up, there are fish balls and burgers in the works. They were hoping to have their first bags of jerky in the U.S. stores by mid-August, but Bordia says there's a catch. But, um, we just somehow found ourselves in the middle of this trade dispute between Vietnam and uh, Mississippi. A law protecting American catfish farmers from cheaper Asian imports means there's effectively a ban on foreign catfish, including theirs. So Mitchell and Bordia are now thinking of launching El Diablito in Canada. Just this last week, we have started looking into what we need to do to comply with Canadian regulations, and then we can start um, shipping it around Canada, which is a really exciting opportunity for us. So will this actually work? This idea of trash fish, I'm not fond of that name. <laughs> Nobody wants to eat a trash fish. But the general concept and idea of eating these underutilized species is a good one. And, and we need to be more open to trying new things if we want to support a healthy food system. And the lionfish... Kim yeah, Thompson, who manages the Seafood for the Future program at the Aquarium of the Pacific, Pacific says there, there is a precedent for rebranding trash fish. For years, Thompson says, sustainability-minded companies have been trying to sell Americans on the invasive lionfish with mixed success. So in terms of the broader market and having an international export market, it's a little bit tougher to say at this point whether or not that would be economically viable or make sense. And Thompson says there's no hope of getting rid of an invasive species just by gobbling it up. The problem with some, a species like lionfish or a species like the devilfish is that they're pretty prolific. So realistically, you're not going to eradicate them, but can you keep them under control? And there's a lot of research that suggests that Perhaps you can with the right um, tools and management. Now, days after graduation, the two head towards a bank near the Berkeley campus. So this is your first check? This is our first check. <laughs> we are very excited to deposit this. A $2,500 check from a social venture competition in Milan. They say it's just the beginning, if they can create enough appetite in Canada for the strips of fish inside. Or, at the very least, the origin story printed on the bag.
Kim Brunhuber, CBC News, yeah. Berkeley, yeah. California.